So in this video, we're going to talk about the JavaScript array filter method, which, like the name suggests, allows you to filter an array. We'll talk about what it does, and then we're going to give some examples. So let's say we have an array of numbers, like we have here. If we type, say, numbers, and then we do dot, you can see we get VS Code's IntelliSense, and then if we start typing filter, there is the method that we are after. So if we open the parentheses, you can see here that we get the function signature of it. And it says predicate here. Now, all that is, is this is, this is describing the callback that the filter method accepts. You can see here, the text here, the description, it says returns the elements of an array that meet the condition specified in the callback function. So it's this predicate, and that predicate returns a value, if that value is truthy, the element will be included in the array. So say we have an array here, and you can see we have our array of numbers, and let's say we want to remove all of these negative values. So this negative 3, the minus 2.5, and the negative 1. So what we can do is we type numbers, we, you can see the IntelliSense fills it in for filter, there is our filter method. Now, filter takes a callback, so that callback accepts the number as a parameter, and then what do we return? So this predicate needs to return a value. The thing with filter is that if the value is truthy, that element will be included in the array that filter creates. If it's falsy, it won't be included. So we want to include any number that is not negative. So if it's not negative, it would be zero or positive. So we would say number is greater than or equal to zero. We need to make sure we return that. And this would be non-negative numbers. So now let's log out this non negative numbers. Let's also put a label on this. And so now when we run this, you can see we have non-negative numbers. There's our 0, 0 0.6, 2, and 3.5, these ones. So again, the key with filter is that if the thing it returns is truthy, the element, the value from that iteration is included in the array. If it's falsy, it is not included in the array. So let's say now instead of working with numbers, what we need to do is work with strings, like uh, Pokemon names that we have here. And what we need to do is filter these to only the names that have a length of eight or greater. So let's change some of these variables here. So we'll say Pokemon filter, and we'll do Pokemon. And the thing we're returning is if the Pokemon length is greater than or equal to eight, and this would be Pokemon with long names. Let's change the references in our log here, and we will log that out. So you can see here we got Charizard and Squirtle, and that filtered out any of the Pokemon names whose length was not greater than or equal to eight. Now, something else we can do here is we can filter for specific strings. So for example, let's say we only want to include Pikachu. So we would do this, so now this callback function is only going to return a truthy value if the Pokemon's name is equal to the string Pikachu. So let's run this. And you can see we get an array with the single string Pikachu. Now what would happen if we're filtering on something that the array doesn't contain? Let's say for example that we are filtering on Charmander. So we only want to include Pokemon if the name is Charmander. So let's save that and run it here. You can see what we get is an empty array. So if this predicate function, if the callback that we pass to filter, if it never returns a truthy value, so if it runs for each of the elements in our array, and every time it returns a falsy value, what we get is an empty array. 
Now what would happen if we're working with an array of more complex elements? It's not simply like an array of strings or an array of numbers. Say for instance our Pokemon, instead of being an array of strings, say it's an array of objects. So it looks something more like this. Well, okay, fine, we can still do this. So now our Pokemon, so this, that variable, so that parameter, instead of being a string, that's now an object and it has a name property and we can check on that name property. So this would be if Pokemon.name, let's say we're doing our only matching for the specific Pokemon Pikachu and now what we would get is an array with only this one particular element from the original array. Now, one thing you want to be very careful about here is that the filter method does a shallow copy of these elements. So all that means is that when it's grabbing the elements from the original array to put them in this new array that it's making, it's literally grabbing this exact object. So let's copy the log here and then we will remove the labels and we'll check to see if the, so here we're checking to see if the Pokemon from our original array, this first one, we're checking to see if that's referentially equal to the first element in our filtered array. And then when we save and run that, we get true. So this tells us that the filter method does indeed shallow copy the elements from the original array. So be careful if you're mutating them because the mutations will show up in the filtered array. Now, one thing to be aware of is that this predicate, this callback function that we pass to filter, it technically only needs to return a truthy or a falsy value. Now, what are truthy and falsy? I'll have a separate video on what these actually are that goes into more detail on it. But for now, you can think about it as in situations where conceptually you would expect the outcome to be true or false in Boolean situations. In JavaScript, sometimes you can pass other values and they will be treated, they will be converted to conceptually those true or false values. So for example, here, this Pokemon.name is going to evaluate to true or false. However, we could do something like this and simply return a number, the number one. What is this going to do for us? Well, let's take a look. If we run this, Notice that our Pokemon with long names returned Pikachu, Charizard, Squirtle, and Mew. That's all of the Pokemon that were in our original array. Why? Well, because this one is a truthy value. And so here in this context where, again, the JavaScript runtime is expecting conceptually a Boolean value, a true or false value. It's taking this truthy value and it's treating that as true. So what would happen if we did zero here? Let's go find out. We get Pokemon with long names, empty array. What's going on here? Well, the short answer is that zero is a falsy value in JavaScript. Again, here it's taking this value, treating it as a Boolean context, and it's conceptually treating it as false. So we get no matches for our filter, leading to an empty array. So essentially be careful when you're using truthy and falsy values. These aren't the only examples, there are many, many more. Use caution when you're using truthy and falsy instead of strictly true or false. So that is the basics of the JavaScript array filter method. I hope you found that helpful. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend who needs to see it, all that good stuff. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.